What's up, Yens guys? Welcome back to Fishing PA with Ryan Reed. In this episode, we're going to get back to our lake breakdown series, and we're going to be talking about High Point Lake. Now, High Point Lake is located in southern Somerset County near Mount Davis. Now, Mount Davis is actually the highest point in the state of Pennsylvania. Now, High Point is a 338-acre impoundment owned by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and it's managed by, you guessed it, our PA Fish and Boat Commission. And the reason we're talking about High Point Lake, again, is because of its fishability. High Point Lake is a very, very good lake when you talk about the sport of fishing. Now, High Point Lake provides good angling opportunities for largemouth and smallmouth bass, walleye, northern pike, yellow perch, black crappie, bluegill, and bullhead catfish. In addition to that, there is a very dense population of chain pickerel. Now it's important for me to mention that all species within High Point Lake are managed by the state of Pennsylvania and the regulations you have to follow are according to the inland waters regulations. All right guys, one other thing I want to touch on is that High Point Lake used to receive a pretty healthy stocking of walleye. Now you would think with the lake going up to 30 feet deep, that the lake would be deep enough and big enough to support walleye populations, but based off of the research that I've done, it appears that the walleye population has not done real well in High Point Lake. And it almost looks like based off of this particular article, that stocking in High Point Lake is gonna be discontinued. Now again, this article was from 2016, so I'd like to get a clarification on that. Um, however, it's worth mentioning because in years past, this used to be a decent walleye fishery. I think in recent years, High Point Lake is considered more of a trophy largemouth bass fishery in addition to bluegill and panfish fishery. Now, since chain pickerel were introduced into High Point, They've actually established themselves. They're naturally reproducing. And Fish and Boat has also asked all anglers to harvest all legal size chain pickerel in the lake. So if you guys catch a legal size chain pickerel, it'd probably be a good idea to take it home, flay it up, and, and get a meal out of it. All right, the other thing to mention about High Point Lake here is that it's actually an electric motor only lake. So what that means is your electric trolling motors are okay. It also means that motorless crafts like kayaks, canoes, they are also okay. All right, so High Point Lake actually has two launches. There's one north and there's one south. After talking to Dan, I realized that the majority of the times we've gone to High Point Lake, we've always fished out of the south ramp. And there's reasons for that. We're going to get into that during the actual lake breakdown when I talk about the map. All right, so the water clarity at High Point Lake, it's relatively clear, but again, it's a PA lake, so it's at the very least moderately fertile. All right, guys, when we talk about fertile water, we're really talking about nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen that come into the water from the sediment. So here in the state of Pennsylvania, we have tons and tons and tons of nutrients, whereas lakes like out in the state of Wisconsin, they're a lot more clear, they're a lot more clean, they have less nutrients than we do here in our lakes in the state of Pennsylvania. Now again, this lake is, is actually really nice because it really supports both warm water and cold water species. When you've got water depths up to 30 feet or more, you know that cold water species has somewhere to go and get away from those warmer water temps that you see in the summertime. All right guys, some of the structure that you're gonna find in High Point. And this has been critically important for me, um, important for Dan, you know, important for a lot of the guys that fish High Point Lake. High Point has a ton of timber structure. I'm talking stumps, I'm talking floating timber, I'm talking felled or fallen trees. Um, there is a ton of timber in this lake, which makes absolute awesome habitat for your largemouth and smallmouth bass species, as well as it gives a lot of hiding places and a lot of structure points for smaller fish like perch and crappie 
and your, your panfish to hide and to live in, as well as it provides pretty large areas for ambush predators like your pike and like your chain pickerel to set up on to ambush prey. So that wood structure is really, really important to High Point Lake. Now the other type of structure that's in there, and you're gonna find it all over the lake, it's weeds and lots and lots of them. Now, we have really not fished High Point in the summer. We tend to fish High Point early season or actually late season, kind of like November timeframe before ice up because there's just so many darn weeds in there. And the weeds stay relatively high, at least from what I've seen the last couple of years. So really you've got springtime and you've got fall to really work the entire lake. When you get to summer, you're really kind of resorting to or more of a deeper water type approach and or picking apart little weed pockets. So what you're doing is you're looking at the matted weeds, you're finding a pocket, you're casting to that pocket and you're popping jerk baits or it's really hard to do crank baits, but you can do that in and out of these pockets to try to get these fish that are within there to, to go and eat. The other neat thing about High Point that I did not know until I started really researching it we fish from a boat a lot when I'm with Dan. However, if you notice walking around the shoreline, you're gonna see a lot of like almost seashell type things. Well, those are actually invasive species of a mussel. So the mussel got into High Point Lake. Now we're seeing a ton of those shells that are washing up on shore. So it's something for you guys to look out for. It's a reminder for everybody to make sure they clean their gear, they clean their boats. You're watching for these types of invasive species because they're very transferable from boat to lake to lake to lake to lake. So you just gotta be really careful. And High Point is exactly an example of that with all of these paper pond shell and these mussels that have kind of moved into that particular body of water. All right, Inns guys. Well, I talked a little bit about High Point Lake just to give you a feel for where it's at, you know, what it looks like from a structure point. Um, just a basic, basic overview on the lake so that you guys can go out there and do more research and check it out for yourself. All right, so at this point, we're gonna do a couple things. First thing, we're gonna look at the biologist report, at least the last recent biologist report. Then we're gonna take a look at my markup of the map, which includes a lot of structure points and just a few items of note in case you guys are out there doing some fishing. Now, with High Point, I have not found a ton of information and please note that I'm doing a ton of research on these lakes. You know, I'm not claiming to know everything about a lake. All I'm trying to do is go out and look at resources like Fish and Boat and online forums and old maps and new maps, something like this on, on the websites. And I'm really trying to take, you know, information from like Fishity and some of these other applications that I use. And I'm trying to consolidate everything into one map to make it easier for everybody to kind of learn something new about that body of water. So there are things that I miss. Sometimes I make mistakes, you know, I've got to redo Ray's town because I made several mistakes during my research and it happens. It's impossible for one person to get out there and see and learn everything about every single lake in the state of Pennsylvania. It'll take me my entire lifetime to do that. So please bear with me. Please know that this is more of a guide and a general idea for you guys to be able to pick up or fish more efficiently on High Point Lake. All right, so with that said, let's get take a look at the biologist report, take a look at the map, and then we'll circle back around, and hopefully this information is beneficial for you guys. All right, guys, so looking at the available biologist reports for High Point Lake, the most recent report available is from 2016. Now, looking at the actual report here for High Point, the first thing that stood out to me was that this survey was conducted in order to identify how the fingerling walleye stocking program at the lake was doing. So as of 2016, Fish and Boat is assessing the success of those fingerling walleye stocking, and hopefully that'll give us a better idea of that program and its success rate sometime soon. Now the first thing I like to highlight in this report is really the tables. So table one, is the length and frequency distribution of sampled fish from trap nets in April of 2015. 
So again, even though this report was in 2016, some of the trap netting was from 2015. Now, if you look at the table, some of the highlights that stand out to me, species, walleye, number caught four, 21 to 25 inches, they were all legal fish. However, looking at 2007, that number is actually in decline. It's kind of interesting to see these numbers and the size ranges of these fish so that you guys can get a feel for how healthy that body of water is. Now that's obviously not gonna tell you the whole story of High Point Lake. If you look at table two, the lake to frequency distribution of sampled fish from night electrofishing from May 2015 would seem to indicate that there are a ton of largemouth bass in there between five and 19 inches. And we've got some smallmouth bass in there as well. Now the number of pike, eight, up around 22 to 28 inches, six chain pickerel between 17 and 20 inches. So looking at the electrofishing, you know, those numbers seem to be a lot better. Now the report gives you some pictures of some of the bigger fish pulled out of there. That really helps me kind of identify what lake I want to fish at um, throughout the year after I check some of these reports out. Then below, you're going to see some figures Largemouth bass collected per hour, smallmouth bass collected per hour, walleye collected per hour, and that right there tells the story of High Point Lake. So according to my initial assessment, based off the biology report, it does look like High Point Lake is transitioning or has transitioned from like a good solid walleye fishery with lots of pan fish to really more of a largemouth bass fishery with some decent numbers of pan fish. Check out the biology reports. Make sure you guys understand what type of information this is giving you because it's important as a fisherman so that you know how your local lakes are doing, what the health situation of the lake is per species. Um, you guys can see incline, decline um, over time, and it really just gives you a good solid idea of where you would want to fish throughout the entire state of Pennsylvania by checking these types of reports. All right, Yins guys. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to zoom in on High Point Lake in Somerset County. So give this a second. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're actually going to work right to left. I want to talk about some of the structure points. I want to talk about some of the things I found through research that will hopefully help you guys locate more fish. So we're gonna zoom in here to the right and we're gonna see, we're gonna start with this cove right here. Now, one thing I wanna mention, I don't have a really solid understanding of the water depth throughout the entire lake. So I'm gonna give you a general idea of at least what I found through research. So hopefully this will help you out. Now I see that this cove here on the right, it's typically about five to seven feet of water anytime you get around these coves and closer to shore. So you guys are gonna see this five to seven feet of water and right here in the middle, you're gonna see what I believe is the stream channel. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more. But as we move to the left, there's a couple of key areas I wanna talk about. The southern shoreline is here and you're gonna notice that there's some felled trees in the water and you're gonna have a ton of stumps and a ton of rocks all the way around the southern shoreline. Now you're going to be able to find these felled trees in five to seven feet of water. And you're also going to find stumps and rocks between five to seven feet of water and probably from seven to 12 feet of water as well. So this whole Southern shoreline is going to be littered with felled trees, fallen timber, and you got some stumps and some rock humps all around this way. Now the North end of the lake here, a couple things to talk about. You have this cove right here that again has a ton of stumps and rocks in it all around this cove. You've got five to seven feet of water somewhere in here and you've got a solid weed edge that runs the length of this northern shoreline. Now through research, I found that along this weed edge, this is really a pike and a pickerel hotspot. So one thing to mention, weeds have a tendency to change locations. Most lakes have solid weed beds that come back year after year. High Point has weeds throughout the entire body of the water. 
So when I'm talking about this weed edge, again, you guys got to go out there and you got to find that edge. It'll change year to year. But the point being is if you can find a weed edge on this lake, more than likely you're going to be in an area where there's pike, where there's pickerel, where there's largemouth bass, and really any of your other game fish that live in here. So as we move around the map, you're going to notice up here, there's again some stumps right outside of this northern launch and you've got a really awesome hot spot right here because this is a very large rock rubble pile that was put in by fish and boat so again five to seven feet of water you're going to find this guy um, right off of shore here you're going to have to look around but when you find this this was put in there as a fish attractor and it's going to be a decent spot to spend some time around now as we continue to move left here I mentioned you've got the northern launch, you've got this weed edge running around here, you've got your pike and pickerel hot spots, and you've got stumps on the outside of this. Anytime you see a lot of structure like this, there's going to be fish relating to it. So jumping back down to the south end, you know, I didn't want to put a million marks with stumps and rocks. Just know that there's a lot of stumps and fell trees and timber structure all along this southern shoreline all the way to this southern launch five to seven feet of water here. And I've noticed, I found on a couple different maps, there's actually some humps slash sunken islands out here. So looking at the south end of the lake here, you've got humps here, you've got a hump slash island here, you've got another hump slash island here, and you've got a solid weed edge that runs down around the southern end of this lake. So anytime you've got humps and a solid weed edge, you're gonna have fish. Now, Dan and I usually come off the southern launch and what we'll start doing is we'll actually go to the left and we'll troll down in these fingers or these coves. So looking at the southern end of this lake, you've got these two fingers right here and right here. These are excellent areas to fish. You've got stumps, you've got rocks. Right off of this point, that picture of the bass that Dan was holding earlier in this video was actually pulled off of this point. We were trolling and that bass went off on I think it was a four inch grandma's, I could be wrong, but this this point is very, very good to troll past, to cast to, it's just a good area of the lake. Now you got stumps, you got rocks, you got multi-species hanging out in here in these coves, stumps, rocks all, all the way around. Um, one item that I did find is a lot of guys say that these bays, the multi-species hotspots and the evening bay hotspot, these are areas where you guys can go to from a boat or even from shore and these are good areas to focus on in the evening. Now, as we work our way around, again, lots of timber, stumps, rocks, and as we get to this end of the lake, you're gonna start seeing a lot more felled trees, a lot more fallen timber intermingled with those stumps and rocks, and we're gonna come up here and we're gonna see another hump slash sunken island, and out here, you're gonna have this creek channel. Now I've marked 17 to 20 feet of water based off of research. Um, hopefully if this is incorrect, somebody can correct me in the comments, but right outside of that, you're gonna see porcupine crabs. So when you guys are out there trolling around or milling around, take a look at these porcupine crabs in that 15 to 16 feet of water mark near the channel, and I promise you this is gonna produce fish. So we've got some stumps and rocks up here on the northern end. Um, you are going to find some fallen timber here and there along this northern end. But when Dan and I go, we, we have a tendency to focus on the southern end of the lake because of all these structure points, because of these fingers and these coves. Um, a lot of good weed structure too early in the season. Um, and it's structure that you guys can actually fish. Now in the summertime, this lake is very, very difficult. So as we move left here, we got again 17 to 20 feet of water. The channel comes in. You've got your cribs. You've got this sunken island here. And then we get into about 17 feet of water here with another set of porcupine cribs in 14 to 17 feet of water. Now these cribs are off of the channel. This is a very good hot spot for High Point Lake. Across to the northern end of the lake, we've got five feet to seven feet of water. And then we're starting to head towards the dam breast. Now this area is extremely good because you've got a lot of felled trees, fallen timber through here on both sides of the lake, north and south. You've got this creek channel moving in and then you've got 16 feet of water here 
and another set of porcupine cribs in 15 to 16 feet of water here. Now, this channel will run right out here through the outflow and it's gonna run out into glade. So you've got your dam breast, you've got the dam structure here and you've got much deeper water at the breast of the dam. So in the summertime, you know, they tell you, go to the dam, find the deeper water, um, especially with thermoclines. If you guys can find that and you can find where the fish are suspended, this end of the lake can be very, very good to you. Now, you guys know I've been fishing outflows a lot more, um, creeks. I don't have a lot of information on this. However, I think it's worth you guys taking a look. Um, some of these runs can be really good, like late run can be really good, at least from what I've heard. Um, but there you go, there's High Point Lake Dam. So this was a quick and dirty look at High Point Lake. Again, there's a lot of structure here. Um, there's a lot of great little coves on the southern end of the lake that you can get into, you know, evening casting. There's weeds all over the place. You know, I've marked a couple of weed edges here that I've seen and I've known about, um, and I've also found through research, but the whole lake is one giant weed. So you guys gotta just get out there early and late season, find those edges. Um, if you work it in summer, you know, pick those pockets apart with jerk baits, so on and so forth. And for those of you that are out there on the ice, you guys probably know this lake way better than I can tell you, but I would definitely look at some of these areas around the cribs, um, around some stump structure, get out here on the weeds, um, off of these points anytime you guys have a lake point like here and here and back here you know that's going to be good areas to start your fishing there were a lot of videos i've seen on youtube about this lake as well so it's probably a good idea to do some more research um, use this hopefully it'll help you guys out all right ends guys well that is my high point lake breakdown so hopefully you guys found this information beneficial. Hopefully it's worth it for me to take the time to research this stuff, compile it onto a map and make it available to all of you. I need to do more of these. I'll be honest with you guys. It takes me a very long time and I'm trying to fit in a lot of this research between work, between home, between other things going on in life. And it's not always quick. So Continue to hang in there with me. I will keep pumping these out as I have time to do them. If you guys found this video beneficial, if you liked it, go ahead and hit that like button for me. If you guys like this content overall, you wanna see more of this face, more of these maps, and hear more about lake breakdowns, maybe on a potential lake in your area, please subscribe to my channel. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. I just want to thank all of you that have supported me up to this point, all of your positive comments, um, all of your feedback. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you as fishermen and as individuals. Um, such an awesome thing this has been, and I'm looking to keep it rolling. So, all right, ends guys. I guess at this point, I'll just say tight lines. We will see yens next time.